make sure it oops <laughs> you can't stop it now <laughs> <laughs> so you should probably call the meeting to order and then make sure you say there's not a quorum. There'll be no official votes taking and so right. forth. Just so okay. it's start at the beginning. All right. So do we want to do this that we start recording? It's already started. Okay. Um, no going back now. All right. Yeah, the recording, it doesn't really matter. That's just stores on my end. So it doesn't okay. become public until I submit it. So oh, that's just right. for, yeah, that's just for my record keeping. Okay. 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 So we don't have to call it. We don't call a meeting to order. Or we do. Sorry. We do. Okay. We do. So um, <laughs> we'll do this. We have to do the thing then. We're yes. soon chapter 20, the acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted in person via remote means in accordance with applicable law. This means that members of the public as, as well as of the public body and members of the public may access this meeting in person or via virtual means in attendance. In person attendance will be at the meeting location. No, there is no in person attendance. Sorry, I was reading the wrong thing. This meeting will be conducted via remote means members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so um, by following the link on the uh, amherst.gov website. Um, no in-person attendance of the members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via te technical means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship, despite best efforts, we will post on the um, Amherst.gov website a recording and transcript of this meeting. Okay, so this meeting is now, you know, called to order. Great. And then can you let Even if uh, I guess Eve just came? Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. Let's see. Um, okay. Well, I'm a co-host too, so maybe I can. Eve, I'll, um, here I'll just do it. I did it. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, and so, uh, any announcements first? Well, do you, do you want to say there's no quorum and that no there's action? no quorum, so there will be no voting on any anything that um, occurs this evening. We will, however, discuss some important things. So, hence, right. it's on the record. Um, are there any announcements? So, well, I have a one announcement or two. So, one is that I was in touch with Holden, and he said he wasn't available today. Okay. Um, also, yeah. we have heard, or I did hear from Darcy Dumont, that there have been two people who applied to be on TAC. Oh, great. So that's good. Um, I don't know, maybe the Do we have a name? waiting. So Holden was one, I guess, and then yeah. there's somebody else. I don't know the other person. Okay. But it seems like we do have the two vacancies now officially. So Aaron was officially taken off the committee. Um, but maybe they're waiting for a few more people like before they go through the process of interviewing and mm -hmm. so on. So I'm going to try to do some outreach to try to inspire some people to apply. But there are yes. a number of committee vacancies right now. Oh, the other news is that um, Darcy Dumond, who has been you know, a big part of the TSO and has also been our council liaison, is that she, for family reasons, she is no longer the chair of the TSO. She stepped down. And I imagine she'll be missing some TSO meetings and maybe some council meetings. So I also expect that she won't be that available to be our liaison. So the council president, Lynn Grazmer, has asked that she be CC'd on correspondence with the TAC. Sure. Do we know who? And hopefully, the I mean, if Darcy is officially no longer a liaison, I hope that they will appoint somebody else. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, and I, I've been um, I on my morning um, bike rides, which is all over the town of Amherst early in the morning, I've been, um, you could say assaulting or, you know, kindly asking other cyclists if they'd be interested in joining. <laughs> I'm like, hey, um, but I did meet somebody who I've seen a lot on the road. You know, I just want other people who are familiar with the roads and the, you know, I see out and about. And so a younger person, a grad student at UMass. Nice. Um, um, so yeah. I'm gonna talk with him again. I mean, I reached out yeah. to the transportation grad students at UMass. Um, I work with some oh, cool. of them and yeah. we didn't, I mean, a lot of them don't actually live in Amherst, unfortunately, because Amherst is so expensive. So they live in like Sunderland and Belchertown and other things. Um, 
And I know that it was circulated to faculty too. Um, Yeah, faculty would be good. They tend to be super busy. Yes. Whatever. Uh, Can you get them to like, do they have to do uh, customer service, community service as part of any of their degree activities? Maybe. Could they they get some of that for being part of our group? Well, and actually at UMass, a union person had told me that you get like if you have a um, like hourly job at UMass that you can get credit for serving, like doing community service and serving. Oh, however maybe. you volunteer that you actually should be allowed to get paid like uh-huh. based on the contracts with the union, get paid for a certain number of hours per month that you're volunteering cool. as long as the supervisor agrees. So that doesn't really apply to faculty, but that does apply yeah. to staff. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Um, and so are there any other announcements? And um, Eve is the um, public who's here tonight. If she has any comments, an agenda item of public comments. I think she stepped away. Yep. Um, and did, we did get a copy of the minutes. Did we? I didn't. I, I didn't see any minutes from the last meeting. No. It doesn't matter. We can't. Oh, right. We can't take any action. Anyway. That's right. Yeah. So that doesn't matter. Okay. So um, that's right. Thank you. Um, so the next thing on the next agenda so, item is to review um, the North Pleasant Street Halleck Triangle Street project. And yeah. um, maybe so I just I just had a quick question, Kim. So you were talking about this before um, as I was getting on, right? So as um, Amber had said, like Guilford is not available on the 19th. So we were trying to see if we had a quorum to meet on the 12th, but you're not yeah, available. I can. I can be here. Oh, oh, you can. Oh, yeah, even, okay. I mean, as, if it's okay. virtual and I think I get an internet connection. So. <laughs> it's an yeah. excuse to leave the oh, lake house and like go to civilization. It is not yeah. oh, okay. So, um, so and Marcus, are you available on the 12th? Yeah, I should be. Yeah. All right. So Bernie said he's available too. So that would mean we would have four of us, which would be an official quorum. And I had emailed Bruce. I just haven't heard back from him. So, okay. That's something I, I guess we should probably go ahead and then switch our meeting to, from the, the meeting. 19th to the 12th. Yeah. So, and okay. so you, you, you'll likely have to talk to Amber about that. Yeah. I'll need to talk to Amber about that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right, and um, so who's going to review the the um, project? Guilford, is that you? Yeah. Yes. Great. So, well, and so um, Guilford, before you get started, um, I just wanted to, you know, I know that TSO and Darcy had sent us a memo that she had some specific questions for us. Um, and sort of, as I've been thinking about the role that the TAC can play or what feedback we can provide, I think that it seems that, <clears throat> I mean, it's great if you want to go over the projects and we can also focus on the different aspects of it. But what I see as doing is, you know, looking at the, t- the list from the TSO, you know, having discussions about the different elements, um, particularly the things that we you know, just our general comments or areas where we're concerned or where we'd like to make specific recommendations. Um, and then on the different elements, we can also, when we do have a quorum, we can take votes. But I, I sort of see us taking a similar approach to what we did with Pomeroy, where it's not so much about how our committee votes if we do take votes, but it's just sort of, you know, what we're thinking about, like, please think about these issues, please think about these issues. And in some cases, I feel like I would probably like it may be the most appropriate for the TAC to defer to other committees too. Like I know, for example, that, um, you know, parking is being re-explored like in terms of the parking policy or DAC or something, or, you know, even the street tree, the tree committee, whatever they're called. Um, yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. but that's sort of my kind of take on our approach. But if you want to give us a quick overview of the project, including yeah, elements that have maybe changed, like since that map was drawn up, the one, the memo that you sent to the council, that would be helpful. So I'll share my screen. Thank you. So everybody can see the drawing here? I can see a Zoom. um, Oh, that's not the wrong thing. (laughs) Share.
Nope, same thing, huh? No, no, we got it. We got it. You got the map? That's yep. good, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so before we discuss anything, let's, let's orient ourselves with this drawing. Um, this drawing is, is basically Kendrick Park. It's the shape that's there now. Um, if you see these dashed lines like these, these dashed lines are things that the Cecil group designed for the park and were recommended by the Cecil group, these little mm -hmm. dashed lines. If you see solid lines like this sidewalk here and this bus stop and this crosswalk here, those things exist already. Uh, this this playground here is the playground we're just finishing building, so it exists already. Um, this blue that's at the intersection of McClellan and North Pleasant, that's proposed work which the council has already approved. We're going to raise the intersection, have a raised um, intersection with crosswalks there so you can get from the McClellan Street neighborhood and that side of the park onto the park. That's something they've already just said we can do. So that's kind of the, the layout of this drawing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what is this blue where your um, pointer is right? This was right there. What is that? Um, that's a top secret um, facility, which I don't think I'm allowed to discuss right now. <laughs> we actually were, t this is not, don't, don't go too crazy and don't tell people about this. But we were looking for places to put a bathroom downtown. Okay, cool. So this is like a, a two stall bathroom. Yeah. The it charge right job or, um... it and, makes and a lot that's... of sense to have a bathroom mm -hmm. there, especially if you have children who need right. who are playing. Yeah. Um, you should remember that when you're talking to older other people who are older than you who uh, think it's better to walk to Bartucci's. <laughs> Um, but this actually, we, we fit the bathroom in with this big lawn area, yeah. which is also supposed to be flooded for an ice rink and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's seating over here. So but don't, don't, that's a preview of things to come. Don't get too carried so away. So can you just um, also for the section on East Pleasant Street with the existing crosswalks now, how like there is the, which, which is Prey Street? So some of that's changing a little bit. Prey is underneath the existing crosswalk and between work too. Right. So right. I'm just trying to double check. So that's Prey Street, Street right here. And that's where there's going to be like the new intersection with um, the rapid rectangular rapid flashing beacons, right? It's going to be like four or what? Well, you know? the crosswalk oh. is here. OK. So that's but, the best stop too, yeah. But um, planning has got money for an additional crosswalk on the other side of that. Right, basically where the K is. At the other end of Prey Street. That's what um, I thought. There, there's going to be a set of crosswalks. But here, um, the crosswalk oh, is going one. to be enhanced, and they're going to be rectangular rapid flashing. Well, oh, okay. It's and is, um, just to clarify, so is the crosswalk there, is it going to shift to the north section? Because then, right, there's going to be the sidewalk or whatever that's going to, like, go through along Play Street out to Triangle? Or is it going to be on that side of the street? Is that going to be, is it going to be on this? The walkway is going to be on the north side of Prey Street. That's what I thought. Okay. That's what you're asking, yeah. Yeah. So like if somebody was crossing at, so is the, are the markings for the existing crosswalk, are they going to stay the same or are they going to shift to the north? There are existing crosswalks across those parking lots, aren't there, Guilford? I think she's, we don't have the- No, I'm actually sure. just asking about East Pleasant Street, just in terms of like for people who are at the park and they want to cross East Pleasant Street, where are the crosswalks? So you, it's, if you're on East, if you're at the, if you right? want to cross East Pleasant sure. Street, you cross at the existing crosswalk here. Okay. okay and, at the and south just, end. That, that crosswalk is a ridiculous crosswalk because nobody actually crosses there because oh. it's on the other side of the driveway and everybody's coming from town actually crosses before they get to the driveway. So okay. that's all gonna change. But I, I crossed, <laughs> I crossed. There. That is all gonna change as a result of the new building that's being built there. So what Guilford's showing in that blue is what's going to be there. What's shown in the black is- Yeah, but that's still now. after the driveway. It is. The driveway is being going away. There's a driveway that's going away. Oh, okay. 
Good. Okay. Got it. So there's the crosswalk at the bank in Prey Street. That's this right. one here. And there's the crosswalks down here. At the right. Roundabout. Now what, so this other proposed crosswalk, like that's the one in between. Yeah, this is one? that going away? That's, that's not, not built. It hasn't been, it hasn't oh, okay. been really proposed yet. Okay, got it. It's just kind of I, in there. I'll leave that. Okay, got it. It's very so, much, okay. yeah, people cross there all, anyway. Yeah, it's, a, it's an obvious place to put one. Yeah. Um, okay. I just have to run and let the dog in. But I'll yep. be back. Okay. Okay. All right. Wait for a little bit. Uh, yeah. I think he's coming right back. Do we lose Eve? No, Eve is here. Can you not see Eve? He's just on I the have bottom. To make my screen bigger. You have to, yeah. There she Share is. your screen. Also, so you I also had a dog thing. issue I had to run away for for a little bit, but I'm back. When's the park going to be open, Gilford? um probably in time for the college students to come yeah that's what i thought it looks i'm sure great. i'm sure they'll love it oh it it's, looks really good yeah it's very well um the the landscape is beautiful one of guilford's people did the design it, it is really beautiful it's this really is the playground pretty. yeah oh paul, yeah it's great paul dethier did the layout and everything and who did paul dethier cool he did a fantastic job it's really nice So, sorry, just to kind of understand the CAD drawing here. The only bit that's been authorized is that bit of blue, but not all blue means it's been authorized, correct? Correct. Okay. So then what, what we're proposing to the town council to change is um, the Cecil group wanted more parking and wanted some parking uh -huh. along the park. And they put in this section of parking right here, which is angle parking. Um, but we uh -huh. thought that we thought we could get some more parking in, and we also didn't like their sidewalk placement. The sidewalk here, if you do this, build this sidewalk, you actually cut through about six or eight um, healthy, mature trees in yeah. the park. There's one here. There's this one. There are a whole bunch, yeah, on that. Edge. There's a whole bunch on the on the because the uh -huh. hill. We'd have to cut into the hill to lower for the sidewalk. So there's there's really two things we're well actually multiple things we're proposing. One is that we could make North Pleasant one way from McClellan Street to Triangle, and we could have parking on both sides of the road, parallel parking. <clears throat> the second thing would be that if we got rid of this green space on the west side of North Pleasant Street and move the road over, we could put the parking there, have a one-way travel lane, have parking, and then put the sidewalk where the road is now mm. so we didn't take the trees down. Uh -huh. it's what not about shown. a bike lane? What? What about a bike lane? Well, being one way, there'll be plenty of room for the bicyclists to go back and forth through here. Well, they should only be going one way through that, yeah, right? Be able to go no, one I mean way. you can have you can have a one way street for cars that's two way for bicycles, and that's actually a really great thing to do. And this would be a much better street for bicycles to go on than on um, East Pleasant. True. So we're never proposing that, but if you want to say we should look at, it, that's fine. Uh -huh. But I guess one thing is, Eve, like so on streets that are less busy. Um, uh, like, do you need to have a bike lane on them too? Like this street is not as busy, is so much. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, we could look at what we've thought about. Um, I mean, it could just be, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that 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 is a good question. Like, but if there are oh, cars parking on right, both no, sides and they're no, coming in and out yeah. and, you yeah. know, it might actually be busy. Well, yeah, if you, well, if you want two-way bicycle traffic, and one way vehicle right. particular traffic you need to separate otherwise yeah gonna... and i would also be concerned i mean just in my experience when you have a counterflow lane for bicycles against like car traffic vehicle traffic you know motorized vehicle traffic going the other way that there is a potential for cyclists mm -hmm. to get hit by people turning who are not expecting cyclists to be where they are and i do know people who've been injured yeah in such counterflow lanes so but I have, I mean, I've, I've ridden them. on those counterflow lanes in Eugene, Oregon a lot, and they're pretty great in, in putting bikes 
you know, making this an official designated mm. bikeway would make a lot mm. of sense to me to get them off of East Pleasant for this sure. length. Would it be better to have, I mean, assuming we kind of go down that route, having a counterflow lane, would it be better to have um, only one of the sides being parking and have, so that you don't, you're not crossing the, you know, yeah, I was but that would mean so, like to try and maintain the same number of parking. You probably have to go with the angle parking, right? Yeah. yeah, I do. I do have a related question to parking. So I, I think it was at our last um, TAC meeting, and Chris Bressup was talking about this project. Um, and Chris, and you were saying how right that the like some of the vision for Kendrick Park in the future isn't just that it would be the playground, but it would also have other types of community events there, like, you know, concerts and so on. And so, like, even if we add parking on this stretch of North Pleasant Street, I mean, when you have those larger community events, the parking, I doubt, would be sufficient for those. Um, and I know when events are held at Kendrick Park currently, like, I can think of um, the Daffodil Run, or I don't know, that's one of the big ones, is, um, is that a lot of the attendees will end up parking or at least some of them like myself or but they end up parking on mcclellan and like some of the other side streets and particularly because it's uh permit parking which is you know only during the weekdays and so on there's no conflict but it does increase i mean if the town does have a vision about having larger activities there like has a town thought about where else parking could be did you say this is only going to be permit parking? Because I was thinking this is going to be taken over by university people during the weekday. We well, haven't. We no, haven't. I mean, so that, it already is taken over by university. All so, the permit parking on closest away from the park on that street is all I university mean, students. Right. The there week. are questions about the parking now. I do agree with that. And I would like Sean or who's ever assessing the parking permits to look at that because like Kim, as you pointed out, so Eve currently on the, the ones on the west side that are currently there, like adjacent to some of the larger multi-unit housing, those are permit parking. And then, so sort of on the second half of the, the north half of the, inner, the north half of the roadway, and then on the um, southern half of the roadway, there are some parking meter spaces. Yeah. I don't see a lot of use of those, though occasionally there are people, yeah. and I know that the driving school uses them. Yeah, They're, those don't get used at all, and the permit parking gets used, but it's certainly, to your point, um, it, it, it's not, there are so, there's so much parking behind all of those um, units on that yeah. street that it's not those people who are using the street, it's other, pe other people who park, just parking at the university who use yeah. those permit, I mean, mainly. I, I, I know because I bike there every single day. <laughs> so, I mean, how, anyway, but I know when I went back and I looked at the, um, the plans when the Kendrick Park, you know, visioning project process was going on, you know, the 10 years ago and 15 years ago, um, and that there were some ideas about parking then, um, like including using, um, like fearing more or other things, but it has, like if there were larger events, like where would people be directed to park? Well, I think a lot of people park in the town lot on that's right off yeah. Prey Street. Yeah. And at night people park in front of the Jones property and in front of the laundromat and those different places. So there's actually a lot of parking yeah. in that corner of town that isn't really monitored that much at night. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Uh, Guilford, you're sharing your email. Really? Well, yeah, because yeah. there's also like the. <laughs> <laughs> Kill, you got I, was looking, I was looking for something, but I'll wait. Maybe you don't <laughs> want to share your screen anymore. <laughs> well, I was I, looking for something that had something to do with, and I think I found it, but it's over here. I don't know if you oh. see that either, but. Uh, we just see the map still. So yeah, if you, wanna, if you want to, if you want to unshare, I had, share. I had a slightly related question, which was, um, is there a, a, a bunch of bike parking somewhere? Because I think, again, this would, especially if you're planning on having community events, bringing people here, and we're trying to build alternative transportation, we want this to be a place that really welcomes people who are coming by bike. There Isn't is the bike, bike parking yeah. as part of the playground. Yeah, so we've added the bike parking. There, there's, there's bike yeah. parking throughout the park proposed. So there is parking 
in this area right here, there's bike loops uh -huh. here. Oh, oh, great. There's the bike share station here. Uh -huh. And then there was proposed bike parking down at this end, which okay. isn't shown because it hasn't been fully worked out. Great. Glad, great. Perfect. Excellent. OK. And so how many total how bikes? I, I don't think about these things. I, I, I'm ashamed that I don't think about these things. <laughs> oh, well, it is a park. I mean, there's always places to park a bike at a park. Because I walk there. No, you, you, it, I mean, you know, if we want to get it to the levels of other places, you need a hundred, you need places for at least a hundred bikes. So 50 loops throughout the park, somewhere, something like that. We've got trees. I mean, yeah, that's sort of how I, and don't do what the stupid university has done where you put the loop like only a foot away from the cement um, curb, because then you can only fit one bike on the loop. So, so yeah. So, um, so Guilford, do you want to share some? Are there any other ideas that you'd like to share about? So we we also exactly. talked about taking the south end of this this section down here, and not doing the angle parking because the angle parking cuts into the park, but keeping it two two way and keeping the parallel parking on the east side or west east side. And then taking out this tree belt on this side as well and making that parallel parking also. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Guilford, is the idea to only remove the tree belt? Oh, is it to remove the tree belt all the way along the whole length of North Pleasant Street? Yeah, yeah, you can do it either. You can do it the whole length or you can okay. do it just the, the northern link. Or if you want to just do the south side and leave the north side. Well, the, yeah, but you, you're calling so, it a tree belt, but I don't think there are very- There's nothing there. There's no, but no. it's green no. space. Yeah, I mean, it's so space. ugly green. Yeah. It's nothing. It's nothing. You're, yeah. you're saving, the purpose well. is to save green space in the park. Uh -huh. But I guess my question, I mean, the thing I'm not really clear on, and I mean, I appreciate that the CISO group, you know, had come up with different visions and that some of these are still dotted with the sidewalks, but do- I mean, and I mean, this would be a question for the Disability Access Advisory Committee too, but do we need like a sidewalk all the way along the length of North Pleasant Street, particularly when there is a sidewalk on the other side of the street? So, I mean, I think about it from a number of perspectives, like what I would, I guess my preference, um, and again, I haven't, you know, at, you know, I haven't heard from uh, Disability Access Advisory Committee about it, but is that we have certain, I mean, I look about the other parks that we have in town, like the Common Park Space, um, Sweetser Park, and so on, right? And they don't have sidewalks, like on both side. sides of the park, no. going all the way around the park. It is a lot of paved space, you know, and we sometimes have trouble even maintaining all the sidewalks that we do have, but I also am not sure that we really need it. Like, for example, one, one group of pedestrians that will walk along the street year round, and so it would not be seasonal, like some of the park would be more seasonal, are people walking from downtown to UMass. And so those people walk on the west side of the street. Um, and that has a lot of traffic right now. Yeah. And that has a really nice connection, you know, between downtown and UMass. Um, uh, and so... And when I think about, you know, if you're having the playground, I think about if there was a sidewalk all the way along the, the more Eastern side of North Pleasant Street on the West side of the park, that, I mean, I do worry about it. One, I don't think all that paved space is necessary necessarily. Um, but then also I think about it from a safety standpoint, if, if you have a lot of kids and where kids are crossing, and I think about the section of North Pleasant Street through campus, like where it used to be, if you were a driver through campus on North Pleasant Street in the center campus at UMass, right? Pedestrians would just be crossing this North Pleasant Street wherever they wanted. And then over time, UMass built it up where they you know, would put um, railings and they'd put vegetation and things to really encourage people to cross at certain areas and I personally like the idea as we have with our other parks of having pathways through Kendrick Park between the main features that we're trying to have people access um, and giving 
and again, I mean, some of this is an access question in terms of like the disability community, but not having sidewalks everywhere. Yeah. And no, just I saying, I mean, just like we do say on the main common, right, that you have a pathway across the common, for example. Right, but because I aren't these, there are proposed pathways through. So for example, that dotted line from mm -hmm. the- um, Right, that the one, yeah. To, to the UMass end of campus. And uh, to like the UMass playgrounds. Park. Right, yeah, and it doesn't make sense to get rid, to put a um, that pathway because of the trees, which as you rightly stated, you know, and there are bushes over there and everything that would prevent people from naturally like crossing at all throughout that that um, north end north end of this park on on um, North Pleasant. I mean, so if we were to have you know the paths that go towards the crosswalk, you know, the crosswalk that's being yeah. fixed at McClellan and to the other a few other points if they're needed. Um, but maybe, you know, yeah. and, and if we did that, I guess the question is if we do that, then do we still need to get rid of the green belt on mm -hmm. the other side, um, on the west side of the street, um, which I actually think, I mean, I realize it's not a lot, but it is in terms of like people feeling safer, like people feel safer walking if they're not right next to cars and it is nice to have some green there. Um, it also just seems like a lot of work to like move the whole street <laughs> to the west to accommodate a second row of props. So, if if um, you sidewalk. want, if, yeah, but if you want to have like the two way bike lane and things, you don't want to have parking on both sides of the street, right? So if you want to have the two way bike lane, you're going to need to probably put in the angle parking which would mean removing the um, green space to allow for that. I mean, because I guess you, that, yeah. well, I guess, yeah, right, me, so, that, so me, that, the, that would be the priority, um, would be, um, I mean, I think it would actually be great to have a sidewalk on that side where you're talking about, Tracy, but given all the other considerations it does, I, I, I think you're right that it could go. Um, and I think Marcus is right that uh, we're going to need that width to get in. It, you know, if you still want to keep the parking, to keep it the back angled parking, and um, and then get the bikes on the other side. So, especially the you know since there are a bunch of big old trees, and we know that that's really a priority. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's Bill's another there. reason for not having that sidewalk, which is you'd have to grade a lot because there's mm -hmm. a slope on that side. So it would require a lot of earthwork to put that sidewalk in. Oh, that's a really, yeah, that's helpful perspective. It's a lot cheaper. Okay. Oh, wait, Guilford, did you raise your hand? I think. You were yeah, talking. I did. So. Sorry, Guilford, I, you're not on my screen right now. Oh, sorry. So. <laughs> The reason we're the reason we're proposing parking against the park is for people who one uh -huh. have little kids and are coming to the little kid playground and don't want to have to fight for parking. Uh -huh. um, I envision most of this parking against the park to be metered parking so that it keeps the students out of it because it'll be for one to two hours and it wouldn't be open all the time. So this parking would be here. And then if you have a sidewalk next to your parking place, you can unload with your stroller onto the sidewalk where you're not in the street with your sidewalk, your stroller and so forth. So that's why we actually like to keep the sidewalk on this side. And this parking is meant more to be for the people coming to the park is why it's mm -hmm. there. Um, so that's why putting the sidewalk in the road and moving everything over is kind of, it's meant more to make the park more inviting to those who don't live downtown that can come and park, do their thing. And, and yes, I mean, you have good, good um, comments about the other things, but if you don't have parking next to the park, it's only going to be the people who live close enough to walk who are going to come here. Uh -huh. but I guess, I mean, there's a few things there is one. I mean, if we look at our other parks, like even um, the main common right on the, on the Boltwood side, right? There's not a sidewalk on the Boltwood side. Yeah, but there's not a 
place. Right, and there is going to be parking there. Like when the parking is added on the Boltwood side, will that have a sidewalk on the Boltwood side? No, right? Yes, it'll have a sidewalk in the North, in the North Common redevelopment project. There's a sidewalk on that section of Boltwood next to the North Common. So I imagine when oh. the South Common gets redone, there'll probably be a sidewalk as well to have a place for people to get out and have mm. a, a walkable, accessible place to walk. Cool. So, so by, by moving the road to the west, you actually save trees along the mm -hmm. west side of Kendrick Park and you avoid having to do all that grading on the west side of yeah. Kendrick Park. To me also that the, um, the, park, the, the front end parking at the, um, I guess it's the south end of, of the park, that makes a lot of sense because to me, that's where the moms, you know, the right. parents with the small children are going to be because that's right there. That's well, yeah, but well the and also Chris was talking up. about mm -hmm. if there were events at the park, right, people would park at like the Prey Street lot. They'd park across the street and they'd be crossing at our new enhanced crosswalks. Right. Yeah. They wouldn't all be parking adjacent to the park. And I mean, it seems like there wouldn't be that many people necessarily coming to like driving just to the park and unloading at the park like that many people right. I mean I thought it was designed as like people who are dining and doing other activities downtown and then F, you know along with those activities they can push their strollers along to the I mean, park and they would be accessing the park then primarily from this eastern side of the no. park and the sidewalk along there they wouldn't be coming my four-year-old has demanded that we go there as soon as it's open. Yeah. As so we will be there and driving there. We won't be going anywhere else. That's oh, okay. That's what will be happening. But how? So but you would bike that, when you bike too. You bike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not okay. going up and over the hill from Cushman. <laughs> <laughs> so. the, the slides are wicked good. Yeah, yeah. I've so. tried them oh, all man. out. They're good. I can't oh, tell great. my kids that they would be there right now. So. So I didn't understand, Chris, your comment about um, about with the trees. So if there isn't, if we don't move, if we don't create a sidewalk on the west side of the park, like all the way along, do you still have to move? I mean, is there still an issue with a lot of the trees? That's what yeah. I didn't understand your comment. That you if were just the making. sidewalk stays the way it is on this plan, you would uh, have to take down trees. Oh no, of course. Yeah. On that side. yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's a major. That is. I mean, that seems major to me. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'm also concerned a little bit if there is that much parking adjacent to the park. I'm concerned about the safety for like young pedestrians. The majority of children, pedestrians who are injured or killed like they're killed because cars don't see them. Uh -huh. And that if you have the parking adjacent to the park, you know, and kids are playing and a ball, you know, rolls into the street or whatever, um, unless, you know, there are really good sight lines with the parking. Um, and there's, I mean, I can see kids like getting hurt actually. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I would wanna have a lot of parking on the side right next to the playgrounds, personally. Yeah, that's a good point. So, I mean, that's the, you know, anyway. But then you get, yeah, I mean, it's like a, it's gonna be a balance act, right? I mean, we could improve the safety by slowing traffic down on that one way down to 15. Right. Right. I mean, there are other options putting in um, raised platforms along the route, uh, you know, painting, making it look like it's a restricted area, that sort of stuff. There's a lot of ways to kind of no, slow sure. the traffic down. Well, and I mean, to Kim's point, right? Like if you have moms or, you know, parents who are coming, I think people might prefer, I mean, maybe there could be some um, parallel parking on that side of the street if it was one way, but I don't think I would have it like go all the way along, like with all of the cars. Yeah. I mean, I might just have spaces on the north end or something. Um, so when you make it one way, the, the way it's going now, you also cut down on cut through traffic because it's not, it doesn't, it's yeah. going to the north one way, you get to the intersection with Triangle, 
the left turn is a little more difficult. So you're not going to have the UMass traffic that wants to cut through on this side anymore. Mm -hmm. Because it's one way you also don't have the UMass traffic that are cutting through here to avoid the roundabout. So you actually do reduce traffic volumes through here a great deal just by <laughs> making it one way and making it go to the north. But, and it I is going to be, it will look tighter to the drivers because it'll be cars parked on both yeah. sides. Mm -hmm. But the thing and the reality is, though, I mean, I walk in that area quite a bit. I mean, Kim it lives the closest of any of us. But, you know, if we're changing the street and I still have mixed feelings about it changing to one way and um, and having the parking on both sides. But I mean, if we're, you know, we're changing the street and there's going to be I mean, when I look at like a regular day, you know, in terms of when are the peak volumes of people at the park, like there's only going to be certain hours. And if you look at the calendar for like the whole year, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of days that there aren't that many people at the park, mm -hmm. similar to the common. I mean, I was on the common, like the main common on a beautiful Saturday afternoon, just, you know, one week ago, and there's almost nobody there. So, yeah. I mean, I do worry a little bit about that. I mean, there are going to be these peak times where you're going to have a lot of people who are going to be at the park, particularly when there's events at the park, but how much traffic is there going to be otherwise? And to me, widening, you know, I mean, even though it's going to be one travel lane, but for a lot of times, if it's metered parking and there aren't people visiting the park, there's not going to be people parked in those metered spaces. And I would have concerns that cars, I mean, Kim has mentioned that traffic drives pretty quickly. They do. Along there. They and do. that yeah. for a lot of times, I would actually think that you could actually increase the cut through traffic if it's a one way street because people don't want to have to go through the roundabout. And on those like early mornings and, you know, different times of year that, I mean, unless you Mike, can I left turn. Um, just to throw out an idea that I'm sure everybody will hate, but um, you know what they would do in a place like Eugene, Oregon, is they would make this not a through street for car traffic yeah. at all. They yeah, would because uh, they would create like a barrier in the middle so mm -hmm. cars can enter from either side, but there's no through car traffic whatsoever, and the only through traffic is bike traffic. Is that something that Amherst would consider? Because it would it would solve a lot of these problems. But it would make it a lot safer because I really don't see a good way around in, unless there's a fence around this park or, or you know, the kid park. Like I, I cycling through here, it is that right now as it is, is very dangerous, especially when there are cars parked on the, the east side you know, the, during the regular, the regular like UM, UMass school days. And then there also are students coming out of the parking, the parking lots from behind these big, um, these residential things. And then there also are delivery trucks and whatever else on the street. It, it's even me, I am a pretty confident cyclist. And I, that street is the one where I have the most difficulties on my daily commute actually. So, I mean, Kim, do you feel like it would be safer if it was one way? Yes, because there's so many different, right now, there are so many different uses of this street. People cutting through, you know, like delivery things, mail, um, you know, whatever in the mornings and then commuters and then people on their bikes like me, you know, like I mm -hmm. feel like it's already not very safe. So one thing, adding kids in the mix, that would make yeah. me kind of nervous. I think, I mean, there are ways to slow the traffic down. My concern yeah. with putting a barrier in there is the fact that, you know, we have residential places that need to access that. So there's going to be confusion about which end they go to. We're also going to need to provide a <coughs> turnaround space for people. You're true. Because they will, you know, need to get out of there too. And if we're going to try and put parking in there, we need to, we're going to lose spots because we've got we need to, we can't have people utilizing private residence no um to turn around in and that sort of stuff so there's, there's got to like, be an issue mm, yeah it seems like you'd almost have to have people come in from the south and have have the barrier be at the very north end almost and have that turn around well, that's what i was yeah, yeah i mean then, then it's the you know what's the point really um one thing I mean, can i share something sure 
as as a uh, a means of where is it going to be? Um, when we talk about like uh, speed tables, right? Um, let me see if this is going to work. Sorry. Because that's something I definitely think we would want if we do make that one way. And I think we would want some kind of deter speed deterrent, actually. Well, yeah. we're talking so, about a raised crosswalk already, right? Yeah. So right, that's, that's one speed. part, but then there's, yeah. there's a great distance between the two. That's yeah. We need some things in between. Yeah. The, the big issues, I think, I mean, if we, one of the things we had talked about previously was adding additional crosswalks along that length anyway right. to improve access across it so that, yeah we could raise those and put this you know have those as speed tables or whatever this is another way of doing it where you actually just put big squares in the middle of the traffic they're slightly wider than a normal um uh -huh. width of a car but they're not all the way across so oh, if you have a bigger truck you know um, right. whatever you can get through fine but cars it just messes with people it messes with how you do it so you you <coughs> slow down but you don't have to slow down and, you know yeah. it doesn't do as much damage to a car as a race speed table can do and all that sort of stuff and also the same with the houses so yeah um and now um it wasn't i forget which meeting it was at um but guilford but you had mentioned when people express concern about you know, speed on this street or something that there might be the potential to do other traffic calming along there in addition to the raised crosswalk at uh, McClellan. Yeah, I mean, we talked about maybe putting something in the middle here. We could put another crosswalk in here. Yeah, could you share your screen back again, please? Sorry, yeah, that Sorry. was my bad. The problem is my, that to me, it doesn't seem like there are any natural crossings because there's only those big, awful residential places like you know, apartment buildings on the other side where- So I'm sorry, Guilford, where were you pointing? <laughs> so we were thinking um, this one here is kind of like halfway. If you put okay. it yeah. here, you lose, you lose maybe four spaces, but you actually could put it here. Okay. And then maybe that makes it more amenable. If we do that, then it makes it maybe more amenable to just having parking. Mm -hmm. Well, and, not and having I that sidewalk the whole way right and i think too if and actually if that sort of lines up with this the um, the CISO group's paths right like about if you just yeah. move their yeah. path like yeah. a little i don't know what the contours of the land are but if you can move their path like a little bit to line up with a crosswalk and so that again would be another way to, for them for it to be directing people yeah. to cross there and not along the whole street yeah we could um, i mean we've that makes actually, sense. and 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 I think too that the more um, like traffic calming that's done on this street is the the um, the less likely people would be to cut through like right. particularly commercial traffic. So, I mean, one thing somebody had contacted me and they said, well, that there's there's commercial traffic that's currently cutting through, including um, uh, trucks that are coming from UMass North Pleasant. There are all kinds of trucks. And that's what makes it. And easier. but I guess one thing is like if you, so one, it sounds like there's some drive truck drivers who think that the roundabout is too problematic for them to use, which I'm not really sure why. I mean, maybe some of that's an education thing because I see the PVT buses go through the roundabout all the time, and they it doesn't seem to be a problem. <laughs> um, and so, um, but if you're adding, if we add speed tables and these other things um, along this section to do additional traffic calming, then I think that would really cut down on that traffic. And I was also, I was also curious about, and I had mentioned this is Guilford, you know, offline, but just, I know that sometimes Northampton in certain neighborhoods, like they'll have like no commercial traffic, like no commercial cut through traffic allowed signs or something. And I don't, it doesn't sound like that's something that Amherst has ever done. And I don't know whether that was something that would, could be explored or something. I just as as the enforcement though. Because it's, um, because it is adjacent. I know that the Northampton Montessori school has the mm -hmm. roads near them have those signs because some of the, they do have an industrial park near them and that some of the truck traffic will try to like cut through 
the neighborhoods. And so it's encouraging the trucks to go a different way. Yeah. But um, particularly if this is a park and I could see too, you know, if there were, you know, larger events there that there could be sometimes, I don't know exactly how this would work, but there could be some times like where you almost like close off the street or something <laughs> that would be a little hard, I guess, with some of the driveways, but yeah. So, uh, one thing, one thing we could do instead of a raised crosswalk at McClellan, we could put a mini roundabout in there. That would uh, slow down. No, no. The, the power <laughs> poles are actually in the way. Oh damn it! Okay. Yeah, they're right. Across. I like the raised crosswalk, and with um, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So the, the one thing I was wondering with the parking too is, um, is there any, are, have there been any designated spaces yet for handicap parking? Like in terms of including potentially, like as we think about families coming, you know, and I can see like, because the park obviously is gonna be accessible, like vans with wheelchairs or whatever. Um, like where, yeah. would, where would those cars park? We do not have any on-street handicap parking in the town of Amherst at this time. Oh, we don't? No. No. Okay. Could we add, I mean, would that be possible with those um, face-in ones? Yeah, if, if we actually want to, if we want to, if we were to, if we were to keep like these four spaces right here and make them back-end parking possibly. Mm-hmm. We could then make um, three handicap spaces here, probably. Yeah, okay. that's probably a great idea. Because I mean, you would also you would like people to be able to get to the park, right? So. But I mean, that seems we actually have all of the pathways to the park. But yeah, right. To aspire to. Yeah, I mean, and you can make the. I mean, if you wanted to make this whole, if you want to take all this angle parking here and turn it to be. Yeah. In parking, you could. There's one. Mm. This is a telephone pole right here. Is why there's a. Uh, okay. And now, if you were going to turn that into angled parking, you know, or a handicap, whatever, however it's set up, does does is there an issue with the trees there, or does no, does the road need to shift it no all to the there. west? No trees, no. So no this trees. wouldn't be a case where you would still need to take some of the. Um, you'd have to shift the road west. Like into the tree belt or anything or would you well if you actually got rid of the tree belt on this side you would reduce how much you need to put the parking into the mm -hmm. park and you could actually uh, have the back end parking and you can make another you can make this a bigger green space here okay and, and that have, you know what that that greens that that tree belt is mainly um used for where students discard their antonio's um stuff every every morning it's just <laughs> we, we decided it takes that long for students to walk from and eat a slice yeah. of pizza so so i don't think there's anything wrong with getting rid of that space it's really just a trash depot right now but uh, really yes mm -hmm. it is trust me <laughs> but then is it okay then if all the if the sidewalk is right next to the parking like, if it's great there, separated if it's a yeah. raised you know um, oh right yeah that's true yeah it's not going to be it's not going to be street level right so it would have a granite curb so like um, you would propose getting rid of the green space even if we don't you know have the sidewalk on the other side you it's, would just honestly propose it's that. just a trash way right now but then it could also it could also um give more space if there was ever going to be any kind of bike like yeah, facility. yeah. Right. so give right. a little bit more room i guess mm -hmm. too and we, we wouldn't take as much park i mean yeah and you wouldn't take as much yeah. park and there's no, um, no so trees if, on that at all there's not there's so, nothing other than lawn all right so if we do put hand if there is handicapped parking angled parking on that south section with the angled parking then assuming there were people with wheelchairs and mobility issues and stuff you would want to have a sidewalk if there is has on that park yeah, are that, there? That's but a lot of those are dotted lines. Currently. A lot of those are dotted lines right now. Right. Yeah, th this area here was supposed to be like um, an area set up for a farmers market where you okay. can have vendors and then have people walk around. Okay. So either the vendors are on this side or the vendors are on this side. It was kind of 
it wasn't really, it was just a concept, right, Chris? It wasn't really decided which way the vendors would be, but this was sort of like if you wanted to have like a farmer's market at this end or something. Uh huh. But it seems to me that if we did put those parking spaces there, and certainly if we put the hand, if we suggested the handicap sp spaces, yes. there, there should be a sidewalk right there. Right yeah. There. But that, that, I mean, I think that could also make sense, like from the McClellan yeah. mm -hmm. crosswalk, that that, it, make, it would make sense to have, particularly if there's going to be more activities on the south side of the park and it's a two way street, yeah. that you can, you know, have the sidewalk for that section. Yep. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, I think we're like making progress. On <laughs> oh, and it, I, I guess, yeah, yep. That's awesome. It, are there other details you wanted to talk to us about, Guilford? Anything well, else? That's the concept. And yes, yeah, like you guys talked about, you can mix and match how you want uh -huh. to. And Right. So Guilford, um, I think you had stepped away, but I, I did ask the question um, about, like if Amherst would consider, it doesn't sound like it's ever been done, but in terms of like restricting commercial traffic, like through this stretch of North Pleasant Street, just because the park is right there, um, like to have it signed, like, you know, don't take this street, <laughs> even you, for the northbound traffic to like encourage people to go stay on East Pleasant Street and go around the roundabout or whatever. We can do that. I mean, there is a process, there's a, an official state process for designating a road, restricting it from commercial and truck traffic. So you could do that. It's just never been done in Amherst. Oh, okay. I mean, do you think it's worth, you know, I don't know. I just, I would just, I mean, because I think even if you, you know, to um, Kim's point about just how people are speeding on that street now, then I think what Kim, what you had said is that the traffic in the morning, it's primarily northbound. Mm -hmm. And I can see trucks and, you know, if people don't, if truck drivers don't feel comfortable with a roundabout and so on. And I mean, I can see traffic trying to go fast, but. Well, you can redesign the, you could also redesign the, um, sorry, I'm just trying to get back to the, the um, Halleck Street intersection here to make it more um, in, you know, if you bulbed out the right. park into yes. the intersection, sure. then it would make it more, uh, you know, any semis or anything, you're not going to get around it, basically. Yeah. Um, I mean, you'd have to be careful with emergency vehicle access, but if you could bulb it out into the intersection more or whatever, it would um, give ourselves a bit more green space and make it less advantageous for people to get there. So, right. so one thing you, you guys all just reminded me, and I was thinking more critically about why it feels like truck. I, I realized that since the um, roundabout went in, there definitely are more trucks coming down that street. And the issue really with the trucks, in, in, in addition to the speed, is that they just take up more space. So your sight line of mm -hmm. seeing cars come, so, you know, in the morning in particular, there are all these cars coming out of those little driveways, but there are cars parked on that side of the street. And then you have these big trucks coming, bolting down that same side of the street. And it really obscures the view. Like sure. it's very difficult to see what's coming. Mm -hmm. So, you know, any, I, I think that, that, that it might be a really great idea to try if we, I, and I like the idea of making this one way actually too. Um, cause I think that'll reduce the number, the, the number of cars going through there. But I really like the idea of making that, getting trucks out of there, especially if we're also going to be adding, you know, bolting small children who are bolting through potentially, right. you know? Well, yeah. Well, that could be something. Um, so, and I guess too, so with the existing parking that's on the, um, so on the north part of the, right. that section of North Pleasant, the existing parking on the west side is the permit parking. Yes. And so, um, so I'm assuming, right, that like Sean and who's ever looking at parking, they could also re-explore that. And that could be something that the TAC includes in our memo, just that it seems that most of those properties Property. currently do have ex you know, parking located in the rear of their buildings. Mm -hmm. And that, right, there used to be a little bit of commercial there and it's not there anymore along that stretch of street. Right. 
Um, right. But that also like just who is that who is that permit parking serving, I guess. <laughs> right. Um, it's but very, also in it, terms it, of like it's only full in the mornings on when UMass is in session. So I right. think I mean, full. yeah. Um, but also in terms of those little driveways, like as we think about the the times, you know, the times of day and the days when this area is going to be, when all the parking is going to be full because there's activities at the park. I mean, maybe something to consider is just the sight lines with those driveways. Um, just again, like thinking about a lot of pedestrians, including kids. And, um, you know, I know that the public way, like I know that TSO and they've come to TAC2 to review kind of our public way, poli the public way policies relating to parking on street. And that right now, the last version I saw, it only talked about that they're not going to, it doesn't include at this time, like any guidance with the sight lines with driveways, but I, my tendency would be to err on the side of caution, you know, in terms of near driveways. Um, Cause Kim, as you're saying, right? Like at certain times of day when a lot of cars are exiting and my, I mean, sort of some of my biggest worries is, you know, particularly when it gets really busy there, if you have like minivans and like larger vehicles that if they're parking really close to those driveways, you can't see around, um, you them. can't see around them. I mean, and even for vehicles parking on the park side, the same sort of issue is like, I would, even if we, even if we don't have the sidewalk there, I don't, I don't know if I'd want to have parking all the way along the whole thing, just because, because it is going to be a concern if you have yes. larger vehicles parked there along with these little kids. So, and that's still a concern of mine. Yeah. Um, but if you have the sidewalk all along, then the parents would park on that side. Ideally, you know, you can have to, to, um, to build right. the point, have the, the, the meter parking on one side and a permit on the other, potentially. And so that would encourage people to park on the side closest to the uh, park, and they would be able to alight from their vehicles uh, from you know, the passenger side. But I thought we were talking about not having the sidewalk on the park, right? All the way along. We had, but I think we're kind of getting back into that, you know, putting it into the roadway sort of thing. But no, but I think if you have you know, as Guilford suggested that you could have like a second crosswalk, I think we can just direct people to cross at those crosswalks. I don't think we need, I still don't think we need to have a sidewalk all the way along the, um, mm. the side of the park personally. I agree. But that can be, that can be something yeah. we can vote on and discuss. When and we yeah, I think have I think a quorum. Yeah. Yep. Because I, I was also thinking that you could um, potentially you know, to, to go with the slowing down of traffic, create chicanes by having, you know, back you know, for, front in parking on one side of the street for a certain amount and then another side for a certain amount. So then the, you know, the, the, the traffic flow is making oh, I see. Uh, an S is down the street. And so there's no way for them to go fast. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think you guys should, well, I guess we won't, we won't be able to, to, make our recommendation when UMass is in session. But I really well, recommend you all try and walk, like, or maybe bike or whatever you uh -huh. do, because it really gets congested there. Like, like I said, I yeah. am a very confident cyclist and that's the place I feel like I have to be really careful. So as it is now, and I can't imagine, you know, because there's also a lot of double parking because people like, like, like um, uh, you know, delivery vans or whatever will be out front because there's a lot of students that live in those houses, you know, oh, sure. a lot of business that goes on, packages mm -hmm. being delivered, whatever. Would we refer um, so, the bicyclist to the bike so I get, to the path? <clears throat> that? Sorry, uh, just wondering if we, you know, encourage the <gasps> cyclists to go on the paths. Well, and I'm not, even, I'm not talking about myself. I'm just saying- yeah, yeah. It is not, it's, it's a really used place and there's not great sight lines. And mm -hmm. if we had parking on both sides, I, I would feel like that might make it. And, and then, you know, people are, there are delivery vans and whatever. What does that do? Uh, it makes right. it really. Mm -hmm. So 
anyway, sorry. But so I, actually, I so Kim, you did um, mention the time frame for us getting back to the council, and yeah. um, and I had been in touch with the council president, you know, particularly after Darcy stepped down, um, and and I did say. Um, and Darcy had mentioned to her that we sometimes have issue with quorum. Um, and I brought up the issue, you know, related to quorum as well, but then also the fact that it would be valuable if we delayed making our recommendations until the UMass students were back, just because it can change this area and the intersection so much. So if that's something that we as a TAC want to pursue, it seems the council president didn't think that there would be an issue with that. Um, I think we should. And because, so, I mean, I mean, Guilford, does that seem like okay to you as well if we put it off a little or? Yeah, there's no money. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> well. <laughs> so why are we even well, making then, a decision then? I mean, yeah. the other thing, Guilford, that you had mentioned at one of the meetings, right, is that like in the fall, you'll be working on what's the list for the spring, like in terms of spring and summer, the next construction season projects. And so, like if we were to make a decision in, you know, if we were to issue our recommendations in mid September or something, like after the students have been back for a few weeks, um, like it doesn't seem like that would necessarily, you know, adversely impact like your own timeline in terms of moving it forward. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. I mean, basically we figured out, we have figured out in town hall that, or in the town government, that it's gonna take a while to get things through with the new rules. Okay. So everything that you're going to be getting coming up, there's like three of them. This is one. There's two more coming. They're all things that we're looking for for next year. Yeah. So okay. Oh, okay. It's not, yeah, yeah. It's not something. We'll we'll actually bang out the McClellan. Well, we're going to try to get the uh, McClellan Street intersection banged out by the end of the year. So okay. Got Thanksgiving, it. Thanksgiving. That'll be in. And then that'll, that'll be, be interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, and I guess one question is like, so when the park is opening, um, because it sounds like the park is going to open, you know, within the next like few weeks or month or what's the time frame on that? It'll open before the end of the month. Oh, great. So, I mean, so in terms of like how we're so currently with the parking at that park. I mean, the playground, like once it opens, so it would just be the current parking, right? So there would still be the permit parking on the west side of the street and the um, metered parking on the east side of the street for that short section. And it would still be a two-way road. And so none of those other, right. and there wouldn't be handicap parking or any of those other things, right? So that would be. Um, so uh, can we go ahead and make it a one-way street? <laughs> Well, well, we, we can't, can't vote. vote on anything today. We can't vote. I mean, I think um, if I hey. guess if we have enough, hey. I've, I've been trying to say one thing that I just want to yes. get in, um, which is uh, again thinking about bikes. I think I personally think it's really a priority to make this safe for bicyclists as well as pedestrians mm -hmm. um, and accessible. So just keep in mind that when we put those um, speed bump crosswalks in, you want to make it still passable by bikes. Um, if they're humps, it's fine, but anyone who's biked over one of those little sharp bumps knows that those are horrible on bikes. Um, or you can leave a little space on the side for bikes. And then the other thing is that I, at the very far north end, I think it would be really great to actually have a bike size cut through path so that people coming from the university can turn right more directly. I don't understand, Eve, what you're yeah. saying. So um, I got I it. Can, can you show what I mean, Guilford? Yeah, I, I can't show it on this picture, but basically you would like to make this sidewalk that's kind of in here be wider. So it's like a multi-use path. Yeah. And you could cut off the road and the cyclists could come this way. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Instead of going all the way around like this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah that makes so, sense. so at what point does the university like take over? Um, like North Pleasant Street? Yeah, North Pleasant Street. It doesn't or, take over North Pleasant Street. Oh, the all of North Pleasant Street is uh, controlled by the town? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Even, okay. I wasn't sure like the section all through UMass and everything. Okay. They just think so. But they <laughs> but they do, but the University Drive though, right, is um, UMass. Uh, University Drive from like campus to Amity. 
that's yeah no from best. yeah from amity up is um amity north is right Master. yeah okay got it okay so this ice rink thing are you going to put it in like a circular path like they have in holyoke at that um park by the um by 91 no, what this is proposed to be is just a low area that can be flooded and you can have a, a, a big rink here if you want to. Mm, cool. And then in the summer when it's no ice, you could have performances and have people sit up here on the, in these little seats mm -hmm. up here and you can have performances down here. You could have a band and concerts yeah. in there in the bowl and so. But they have done that before. I mean, it has been flooded and, and there's been right. a yeah, ice skating rink there or yes. a small yep. rink there before. Yeah, but the goal here is to make it smoother and easier for us to flood it and control it. And then, uh -huh. and then you so, have a little walk. So, so Guilford, you had mentioned uh, just about the funding. Um, so, so in terms of, so which parts of this, you know, of what's being proposed or could be done here would need um, a lot of funding. Like if we were, if it was just to like add or take away parking or change parking designations, right? That doesn't require funding per se. It doesn't much. require, it doesn't it's require just like a lot. Town, it's just like town time and. Um, there, there's signage and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Um, but no, to change, I mean, they actually do this road. It's just basically, and when you repave this road and re reconstruct this road, we would do it in a certain different way. That's all it is. Uh, so the idea would be to have to, so would North Pleasant Street have to be repaved to turn it into like a one-way street or? Yes, we would repave this whole length right through okay. here and this one here. Um, but it seems like it would be like less expenditures, right, than if the street had to had to be moved to the <laughs> moved to, moved a lot to the um, it, west, it's, right? So really, it's not that much more. It's not oh, that okay. much more cost the way we kind of set this up. We uh, kind of envisioned because this there's no all the curbing along the side of the road is almost buried. So if you want the curbing, you're gonna have to take it out and reset it. Okay. So if you take it out and reset it five feet over from where it is now, uh -huh. it's the same price mm -hmm. as taking it out and resetting it in the same uh, place. Okay. And then the same I'm, here. I'm going to run everybody. Okay. Thanks for your hard work. All right, thanks. Okay. okay. Um, and then, go ahead. Sorry. So I was just, I was just looking at the, um, the TSO's um, memo to us and the memo um, just, just to remind you, I think part of what we are trying to do is to um, not necessarily debate what is happening on the park, but to address the TSO's like concerns. Mm -hmm. and, yes. And um, the, the question, I, I, I mean, I was just looking at their memo to us is, should North Pleasant be one way? Yes. And the caveat that they say is to allow for more parking. <laughs> If so, right. should it be northbound? I think, you know, I think we can address those issues so far. If so, should safety fe features be added? So the question is not, you know, anything else about the, that piece of the, the north end of the park, but whether or not it should be one way to allow for more parking. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's not necessarily I think right. we should break them out. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree. So yeah. I, I just want to, I just wanted to like remind us all yeah, yeah. what right. questions were that we were actually being asked. Mm -hmm. and, then, yes. um, and then the other questions really, the questions that they're asking really are about parking. So should 25, the second question they are the second um, point that they have is parking. And mm -hmm. should 25 on-street parallel parking spaces be added to maximize parking? So they're, you know, as pictured. So what we have right now. Mm -hmm. If so, should it be permit parking? Should the permit parking on North Pleasant be moved to the east side of Kendrick? Well, so actually, so Kim, the- yeah. I'm sorry, the, I'm just reading what- No, the, the message, this is actually different than oh. what Darcy sent to, to distribute to the TAC. Mm -hmm. And the version that I- the, oh, the version you. that I shared, 
um, it frees some of it differently. Okay, great. Um, I mean, the, it's the same sort of points. And I think, you know, what we, what we could do, I mean, again, I was thinking about this similar to what we did um, with Pomeroy Village right. is we just say, if you're adding more parking, like these are our concerns, like yeah. safety, mm -hmm. sight lines, kids, like, you know, just those are our points and these are our suggestions on how to make it the safest. And just to the point about the parking supply, you know, for who's ever studying parking, just revisit whether those need to be residential with spaces because if they don't need to be residential parking spaces, I mean, I'm sorry, um, town center permit parking on the west side of the park, then that's actually creating new spaces as well in terms of the general parking supply of for people who would be visiting the park directly mm -hmm. and wouldn't have residential, I mean, wouldn't have yeah. town center. I can see, permits. I can see the park being the draw for families. Right. Like you go there, you park there, you go to the park with your kids for a couple of hours, an hour or so, and then you go somewhere and have food afterwards, right? Yeah, right. Totally. Maybe across the street, wherever. Or vice whatever. versa, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I see, like, the, yeah. in the picture here that we see, you know, in the proposed plan, yeah, I see some pretty good sight lines on the parking on the west side of that street, right? They're not all bang up to the edges of the driveways, right? There's some, there's some relief either side so some maybe are, what we yeah. can talk yeah some some yeah, so maybe what we talk about is um and when we you know when mm -hmm. or if, whatever we do is just say right. you know we want to maximize the relief from the uh on you know opt whatever uh optimize the relief from the driveways to um improve sight lines sure and then maybe we can look at like i say like opposite side of the streets but whatever you know additional structures within the street pumps whatever to slow traffic down to move things around or whatever mm -hmm. yeah yeah um, i mean i can i mean if it's helpful i could share the version that um was yeah. the final version that uh darcy sent around because the other the other question that we were asked about seems to be sidewalks and i feel like we made some progress on yeah that i think so um but <laughs> You know, there also are other issues that feed into this that we're not exactly discussing, which include, you know, um, you know, there's been all this issue, and I, I just want to put this out there, and, you know, I live in this neighborhood too, so, um, you know, there's been, there's all kinds of issues with the on-street parking on McClellan, and my guess is, you know, we get rid of the, whatever, the, the residential parking on on um, North Pleasant, that would back then into um, McClellan and Lincoln. There's all kinds of issues with parking. Mm -hmm, sure. And I'm sure the TSO is worried about that because that's another issue that they're, they're concerned with. Um, and also the other, the other issue, which, you know, kind of, it's feels like it's kind of the elephant in the room at this point is all of the other um, student dorms that are going in on the other side of Kendrick Park and the lack of parking in those ish, those areas. And I kind of feel like maybe that's what part, I, I, ha, I very cynically feel like some of this like increase of the permit parking around here might be due to, you know, increased demands because of that too. And I feel like it's something we need to kind of at least be a little aware of. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that will help with the kids running back and forth on the streets. I don't know. Anyway. But, I mean, I guess the thing is, so have the number of um, town center residential permits increased? Like to my knowledge, they haven't really changed the map very much, though I'm not a parking expert by any means on this. Like, I feel spaces, like the, the number, number of spaces, spaces have. No, the number of spaces, no. Uh, the amount of permits are, are yeah. what oh, we yeah, call of course. Right. permits has increased. Yeah, right. And I mean, and, and some council members, right, including Alyssa Brewer, have expressed concern about that and want, actually, I think TSO and the council to reconsider who's eligible for the residential, the town center parking permits for residential when they don't, you know, live that close or what. I mean, I think, I mean, she, it sounded like she was going to ask TSO to review some of that. Some of those larger questions about yeah. where but I, I, I just i guess i just want everyone to be yeah. aware that they're you know 
like cutting the parking, you know, I, it seems weird that that's the main issue that we're being asked about. Um, but I guess that's also the issue that the, you know, is, is directed to our town councilors the most probably because of resident, residential sure. or whatever. But people want things to be convenient. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and I mean, a parking has been identified, you know, and I, it does make sense to have parking near the park and yes, of course. all those things. I mean, so the one, I mean, remaining, I mean, one rain, remaining concern I do have, if it is one way, is just if that does discourage, like if some people are going to end up, and maybe I worry about this more like with Boltwood or something, but if some of the people who would have gone south bounds on North Pleasant and won't be able to like if they instead of going on Triangle and going to East Pleasant and going that way like are going to cut through like other streets like if they're going to take Lincoln and McClellan and I don't think that's an issue because it's not that convenient to do all of that and you'd have to really know but people know. I mean, I had a counselor. I, 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 I don't think that's an issue. Okay. I mean, I had a counselor the other day just tell me that they never go through the roundabout and that when they're at mm-hmm. UMass, that's how they go. They take Lincoln and McClellan and stuff. Yeah. But <laughs> anyway, I mean, I mean, that's the whole, you know, the, with the, tr- with the network, when you have a network, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really good when it's you can distribute contact. all the traffic, like across the network mm-hmm. and it makes it complicated when you have one way streets that send people like this way or that way. And yeah. particularly for people who are visiting or something like not everybody's familiar with that. Um, but Soon enough, we'll have enough roundabouts where they can't avoid them. Yeah. <laughs> and when Guilford yeah. can <laughs> cover the town with roundabouts, Mark. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, okay. We did get approaching our our witching. Yeah, out. this is. So I think um I feel like we made progress. I can write up mm-hmm. like some of what we talked about. We're, right, we're not at the stage where we're making recommendations. There is a TSO meeting at six thirty. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming Guilford, are you going to that? <laughs> Wait, now, like now? Yes. Oh. Um, but I could just mention that we would like to have an extension. Yeah. And um, and rate, you know, bring up some of the key things that we talked about without our quorum. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like we will be able we will be able to meet next week. I think we have a quorum for next week so we could potentially vote on some of these things. But if we're going to wait until the students are back. I, 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 I would say as someone who lives in the area and literally goes on on um, that street every day, I really would encourage people to wait until the students right. get back to yeah. see how that feels. Because like I said, I am uh-huh. a very strong and adventurous cyclist and that's probably the least so, safe part of my commute every day. So I think, you know, one thing for us to think about moving forward in terms of our other meetings and particularly if we're going to ask, you know, for an extension until like mid September with the memo is, um, so if we meet next week on the 12th, we don't meet on the 19th and then we're not meeting on the 26th, which is like right before everything starts happening. And then I guess that we would have a meeting on the second Um, and the students will be back. So, I mean, I believe classes start Classes start that first week of September, but then a lot of students are going to be moving in. Yeah, they start on the first. It starts on the first. Oh, right. Okay. Get back the week. I mean, the first year students are coming in that weekend, the weekend before. The 30 Amherst classes. So then, I mean, we could report back to TSO mid month. And and also, it does sound, Guilford, that there could be other things like coming to the TAC for consideration, too. Can we have a meeting? In Kendrick Park, like an actual like walkabout meeting, you can. I would, I would be yeah. up for that, but I mean, I agree with Kim. I'd like to wait. I do watch. Right, yeah, I agree. I, I think yeah, like, it may until... you know, part of that actually go there. Maybe on the second or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if we're allowed, I, have... I guess we'd have to ask the council if we're allowed to meet in person. Or is that an option given to us, or is that? You're allowed to have site visits. Every oh, okay. other committee has site visits. Okay. You just call it a site visit. And... Oh, okay. So it'd be a, in addition to a regular meeting. Yeah, or you could schedule half the meeting to be or. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, but then we'd all have to go back to our computers and get on Zoom. And but yeah, yeah. we could all we could all sit in a new park on the second. Yeah, I know, and, and, and use the slide. That would be awesome. I, I you can use my work phone's Wi-Fi. So and um, we will have to move. We I mean we typically meet on the first and the third Thursdays, and we will have to move the one on the sixteenth because it's still part of Yom Kippur, so we wouldn't be able to meet that week. Um, but maybe we could meet on say the second and the ninth and you know after that like release a memo or something sure so okay but thank you thanks everybody thanks everyone hey. all right bye, bye. Next week. bye bye yeah see you next week <laughs>